say neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh neighbor. The, message the message today is entitled The Right Tool. Find another neighbor with your other good eye and say neighbor. Oh neighbor. The message today is entitled The Right Tool. Let's go to Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse 12. But let's read and read strong. One, two, ready, read. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God. This is a celebratory occasion. Somebody say, yes, it is. The Bible instructs us, commands us to honor our fathers. And I need you to know that that's your duty today to honor your father. As simple as saying, thank you for what you have done for me. Just that simple. What did they do? Well, they provided the seed so that you could be in existence. You can turn me down just a little bit, Max. Somebody said they provided the seed so that I could be in existence. And I want to bless you, even if that's all he did. If that's all he did, he still needs to be honored. Amen, somebody? You don't have to clap, but let me give you the word of God. If that's all he did, he still needs to be honored because without his seed, you would not be sitting here today. Amen, somebody? So tell him thank you. Let him know you appreciate his seed because without his seed, you cannot succeed. Now, if your father has passed on and maybe you're sitting here today wishing your dad was here, but he's not, and you want to know how you can honor your father, I'm going to tell you how you can honor your father that's deceased. You honor him with your memories. Matter of fact, you honor him by telling everybody who will listen about your daddy. You ought to be talking about my daddy. My daddy was this. My daddy was that. My daddy loved me. Because every time you mention your father in a positive regard, you're honoring your father. Honor your father if he's deceased by remembering the good times. The times he put a smile on your face. Even the times he maybe got on that backside to correct you because he did that because he loved you. And then a lot of kids, they wish they had a father that would do for you what your father did for you. Somebody say, I've got to honor my father. Yeah. Say, why? why? Honor, honor. All, fathers. all fathers. Number one, because the Bible said so. Yeah. Number two, because we don't have many fathers. Come here, 1 Corinthians 4 and 15, it's in your bulletin. It simply says you may have 10,000 teachers. That's a lot of teachers in Christ. It says you may have 10,000 teachers in Christ, but guess what? You don't have many fathers. And I'm gonna tell you something, fathers are rare. Statistics tell us that 57% of all children in the world are born out of wedlock. It got real quiet then. I said 57, not, not 50%, 57% of all children are born outside of wedlock. You say, well, what difference does that make? Well, according to statistics, children without a father are four times greater to be in poverty. Children without a father are seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen, the young girls. Or the sons are more likely to go out and have a baby as a teen. Uh, without a father, you're more likely to have behavioral problems. I wish I had a church somewhere. Without a father, you're more likely to face abuse and neglect. Without a father, you're twice at the risk of infant mortality. Without a father, you're more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol. Without a father, you're more likely to go to prison. Without a father, you're two times more likely to suffer obesity. Without a father, you are more likely to commit a crime. Without a father, you are two times more likely to drop out of high school. That's why we better celebrate any father that we can find. That's why we better take a minute to clap for a brother who's trying to be, that's, that's why we better lift them up today. And I don't care what level of fatherhood you're on. I didn't come today to beat you up. I came today to build you up. Now you might be part of the fatherhood with Ray Ray Nam and Pookie Nam that, that hang out under the, the light, but you provide Pampers and Similac. I want to clap for you, amen, somebody? I want to clap for you. You may not be all that you can be, but you're doing something, and it's from that place that I want to minister to you and take you to the next level. Somebody say, fathers are rare. Fathers are rare. I want to tell you something. Fatherhood is the greatest assignment in this entire world. The greatest assignment in the world is to be a father. And I should know because being the father is the most challenging thing I've ever done. I've done a lot of things that were challenging. But the most challenging thing I've ever done in my life was to become a father. 
I didn't say make a baby. Mm, it's quiet now. It's quiet. I, I'm making a baby is fun. So got quiet then. Oh, making a baby is easy. But being a father, that takes some doing. It's challenging, Julius, because you have to try to figure them out while they're growing because no two children are exactly alike. I got three and all three of them just are different from night and day and day and night. And oftentimes as parents, because we don't know how to be fathers, we try to father our children all the same way. Somebody ought to tell somebody it's not going to work. Because I want to demonstrate what it means to be the right tool for the job. I want every father in this building to know that you are the right tool for the job. Somebody say children, children. Are, a are a blessing. But you got to know what to do with them. Say with me, fathers, fathers are, are the right, right tool. I, I thought about how I wanted to illustrate this this morning and, and, and this came to me in my office. That, that this right here represents the things in life that we want our children to adhere to. This represents the things that we want our children to be. And this is where you get to participate. Fathers only, fathers only. What are some of the things that you desire for your children to adhere to or to become? Holler at me, fathers, and I'll, I'll write it down. Oh, that's a bad look. That's a bad guy. Oh, love, wait a minute. Wait a doggone minute. Wait a minute. Wait, a minute. brothers, I spent 10 minutes building y'all up, had folks sing to you and clap for you. And I asked you a simple question, and you're sitting over there like you're, mm. And we're going to try this one more time, because I, I, I don't want to say nothing bad about fathers today, but y'all pushing me. So we're going to try this one more time. I'm going to rewind it and give you a second chance. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Fathers. What are some of the things that you desire for your children to adhere to or become? You say them and I will write them down. Thank you. Somebody say successful. Keep on hollering to me. Hard working. Oh, so now y'all trying to bum rush your brother. Wait a minute now. One minute you didn't have nothing to say. Now you got me looking special. What else? Wise. Wise. I got hard working. What else we got? Loyal. Loyal. Who said respectful? Please, let's have that. What else we got, fathers? Who? Who? Oh, Lord, we need to write that real big. Did y'all hear that? Dependent. Not on us, but on themselves. Amen. What else, fathers? Come on, act like you know, fathers. Want them, want them to be smart. Amen. Even if your daddy dumb, you want them to be smart. Amen. Come on, somebody. I heard educated. What else I got? The lottery. You want them to win the lottery? I'll write it down if that's what you want, Dad. I mean, I don't blame you. What you? Godly. Thank you. I, I thought you said lottery. Amen. Anybody else? I'm almost done, but help me, fathers. Oh, a leader. Please, please, let's have some leaders. Anybody else? We're almost there. Who? I got trustworthy. I got that. Honorable. Oh, that's good. Honorable. Honorable. Keep on talking. Who? Integrity. Lord, that's a foreign word today. Give me a few more. I'm almost done. I got responsible. Intelligent. Selfless. Oh, that's good. All right. All right. That's good. Let's give our men a hand. Oh, that's good, guys. I think we can do better than that. Come on, guys. That was hard for them. Come on. Come on. They, they struggled. Come on. They, they struggled. They struggled, but they, they came through. Okay. So, 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 so this is, this is our sons and our daughters. This is what we desire them to adhere to and, and inspire to be. Now, this is what we want them to become, Right? This is them. You got really excited, little girl. I don't know why. Somebody say, this is my child. 
I'm doing the best I can, okay? <laughs> this here is a boy. This here is a girl, okay? Let me put a skirt on her just so we can kind of kind of feminize her. Somebody say, this a boy. This a girl. And, 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 and uh, this is what we want them to become. Okay, cool. Minister Watkins, uh, bring me uh, the wrench. What is this? What is this? So the goal in life as a father is to have the ability to connect your children. I'm preaching already. With that which you want them to adhere to or become. Now, oftentimes as fathers, because many of us were raised differently, we try to use the wrong tools to get the job done. See, in my hand, I got a screw. And if I want to adhere this piece of wood to this other piece of wood, I can try to use this tool. Uh, and I'm here to tell y'all uh, I'm struggling See oftentimes we like to talk about something being wrong with our kids <laughs> Don't you take my message you do it every Sunday uh, Pastor there's something wrong with my kid I need you to talk to him. Well oftentimes father I discovered that it's not really something wrong with the kids it's just that we might be using the wrong tool for the kind of kid that the Lord gave us. Somebody say that, that that's good. That, that's good right there, Pastor. Here, here, bring me that hammer. Bring me, bring me the hammer. Amen. Somebody say hammer time. Amen. Anybody had a daddy that was a hammer? Uh, what do a hammer do? A hammer has no regard for how this particular instrument is designed to create it. The father is determined to help the son and the daughter adhere to certain things in life. So what a lot of fathers do is they come down like a hammer. Oh Lord, I hit myself. Uh. And what they do is they try to beat it in them. I wish I had a church in here. What they try to do is they try to use force uh, to make them adhere and to make them obey and to make them do what you want them to do but I can hit this thing all day long and I'm gonna tell you something it's not going to go all the way through not because there's something wrong with the child but there may be something inappropriate with the two so I, I can't beat everything in them now I'm gonna tell you something, I believe in the right hand of fellowship. I believe in discipline. But let me tell you what I learned as a 21st century father, you got to do more than whip them daddy. I wish I had a church. Take this here. You got to do more than threaten them because let me tell you something, these children are a different breed. I wish I had a church. Do I have anybody can say, show you right pastor. Oh, they're a different breed than, 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 than from, from how we grew up. These kids, oh, they just, mm, they, um, they, they interesting, y'all. Why are they interesting? I believe they're interesting because God made them the way that they are. See, if the wrench didn't work and the hammer didn't work, as a father, it's my responsibility to study the child. I wish I had a church to learn the child and to look at the tools that I have and figure out what does it take to motivate my child to be what it is they need to be in life. Uh, bring me the drill. Oh, suck it, duck it, quack, quack. Pastor, why, why you got a drill? Pastor, well, I got a drill because if you look at the screw, the top of the screw has what's called a head. I wish I had a church. I used to be slow too. If you'll study the head long enough, the head will tell you what type of instrument, what type of tool is necessary to motivate the child. Did the wrench work? No. Hmm. Did the hammer work? No. I wonder, I just wonder, if I got the right tool, I'm about to preach myself happy. Hmm. 
and the tool I have has some power. I wish I had a church in here. I, I wonder if I had the right tool, would I be successful as a father in helping my children adhere to the things that I want them to adhere to and to become the things I want them to become. Well, look at here, look at here, look at here. Look what you can do, daddy, with the right tools. I, God Almighty. Boy, that thing is adhered to everything I wanted it to be. And I hope that you don't miss the point that when I hit it, I hit it to the shape of the cross of the Christ. I, I hope you don't. Because uh, a real daddy recognize he going to need a little God on his side. Give God praise if you got it. I got to go. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. I sure appreciate your help. It's good. Somebody say the right tool, the right tool. is in the building. In the building. Say fathers. Come on, look at them. Say, fathers, I want you to know you are the right tool. Keep talking to them. Say, sometimes it's not a matter of strength. Say, sometimes it's a matter of wisdom, insight, and foresight. Now, give God praise if you got any of that. I got 17 minutes. I'm good today. Can I go just a little deeper? Can we kick it? Yes. Try it again. Can we kick it? Yes. When Jesus was baptized, y'all remember that scene? Yes. He goes down, meets up with a fellow called John the Baptist. He's not Baptist because of his religion. He's Baptist because of his occupation. He is a baptizer, so they call him John the Baptist. He goes down as the son of God, the Messiah, and he submits himself. Beautiful scene. He submits himself to one of his disciples, one of his followers, so that he himself can be baptized. Yeah. Folks thought it was strange that the son of God would submit to a, another man. But what I love about Jesus, Jesus will submit to us if we submit to him. I wish I had a church. It's what we call a covenant relationship. And here, here's what we have. Jesus is baptized in Matthew 3 and 17. This is going to bless you. And John takes him down. And then brings him, he don't take him down like Pete take y'all down. No, 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 no. John took him down and bring him up real quick. Like, and when, when John the Baptist brings Jesus up out of the water, the Bible says in Matthew 3 and 17, oh, I love the Bible. And a voice, help me, Holy Ghost, a voice from heaven said these words. This is my son, whom I am, good God Almighty, whom I love. And with him, my son, I am well pleased. Say, Pastor, what that got to do with fathers? They are so glad you asked. Fathers, let me bless you and tell you this, that every father should tell his son and his daughter three things in this life. Number three, work yourself backwards, Pastor. Number three, fathers, tell your children that you are pleased with them. I should have got more claps than that. There are grown people in here who have never had their father tell them, I'm pleased with you. We have fathers who don't mind fussing when we do something wrong, but we're a little slow on cheering them on when they do something right. I wish I had a... Fathers, I told you, it ain't all about strength. Sometimes it's about wisdom and foresight, and you got to be the kind of father that tells your children, I'm pleased with you. You maybe didn't make all A's, but you passed. I'm pleased. Y'all ain't gonna clap today. Oh, you got up this Sunday morning on your own and you was ready to go when it was time to leave. I just want you to know, I'm pleased with you. Somebody say you can draw more with honey than you can with salt. And number two, every father, you should tell your children that you love them. I knew I wasn't gonna get a lot of clap on that right there. I am amazed at how many grown folks are in this room who never heard their father say these words. I love you. Because we've been raised as a generation that men are supposed to be hard and affection is supposed to come from mamas. But sometimes you need to hear your daddy say, boy, I love you. Come on, somebody. 
Oh, you ain't got to clap for me. I know I'm what I'm talking about. And you can't tell me some of these girls don't need to hear their daddy say, girl, I look. Come on. See, when you don't hear your daddy tell you he love you, then you just lose your mind when anybody else tell you they love you. But if your daddy done told you he love you your whole life, somebody else talking about they love you, be like, oh, I was, I was love for you showed up. I be love when you leave. My daddy love me. And daddies, you got to love your children even when they're strange. I wish I had a church. You got to love your children even when they behave in ways that you don't understand. You got to love your children even when they make decisions that you don't approve of. It's not getting any clapping here now. But pastor, that's just not the way that I raise them. No, 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 no. It's your job to love your children just like God loved you through every stage of your, you ain't going to clap, but I'm preaching good. And you got to tell them you love them. Nah, pastor, they know I, no, 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 no. Tell them I love them. Well, I did when I bought them some clothes. No, that ain't the same. They need to hear, son, I love you. Daughter, I love you. And then the number one thing every father needs to tell his child, you need to tell them fathers who they are. I'm almost done. I feel good today though. Jesus, the son of God, gets baptized by John the Baptist and God stops what he's doing to tell his son who he was. I said, why would God have to tell Jesus who he was? I'll tell you why, because sometimes we're not sure about who we are. Sometimes we'll let this world make us question our greatness, question our purpose. We'll let the statistics and the news cause us to doubt ourselves. But every father ought to be able to tell his son, you are a game changer. Tell your daughter, you are a queen. Tell his son, you are a king. Tell your daughter, you're smart. Tell your son, you're going to be rich. Tell your daughter, you are beautiful. Tell them who they are. Mm. Somebody say, tell them who they are, father. I'll close with this because I know y'all having a good time today. In 1994, a movie came out that rocked my world. And I'm not ashamed because according to the data, it rocked the entire world. In 1994, a movie came out simply entitled The Lion King. Oh, I got a few folks over here. Uh, I got, okay, okay, okay. If you'll give me a few minutes to set the backdrop with an initial worldwide gross of seven hundred and sixty six million dollars. This movie finished its theatrical run as the highest grossing release of 1994 and the second highest grossing film of all time. Somebody went to see that one. It's also the highest grossing traditionally animated film of all times, as well as the best selling film on home video. Now this is going to date us a little bit, but it sold over 30 million VHS tapes. I know why you ain't clapping. I know why you ain't clapping. Because some of y'all trying to figure out what in the world is a VHS tape. Those were the days, amen. The Lion King garnered two Academy Awards for its achievement in music and the Golden Globe Award for Best Motion picture, yes, yes. musical, or comedy. Yes. Somebody say, Pastor, Pastor. What, does do what does that have to do with Father's Day? With Father. well, I believe, fathers, we can take a lesson from the Lion King movie. Yes. See, in the movie, The Lion King, there was a lion named Mufasa. I, I feel my help now. I'm about, I'm about to cut up, Julius. I'm about to cut up. I'm telling you, I'm about to cut up, man. Yes. Mufasa was the Lion King. And lo and behold, he had a son named Simba. Mufasa and Simba were a beautiful father and son team. And Mufasa spent time with him, loving on him, telling him who he was, letting him know how proud of him he was. But Mufasa had an evil brother named Scar. I wish I had a church in here. Every family got some scars you got to deal with. I wish I had a church in here. 
every father's got to be on the lookout for his scars to make sure his scars don't scar his sons and his daughters. Come on, somebody. Okay, I, I don't have time. Uh, scar was an evil cat. A jealous cat. He wanted what Mufasa had, but he was not in the direct lineage because Simba was the heir. I wish I had a church in here. See, your children ought to be the heir to something. I wish I had a church in here. Your children ought to get something that's handed down from you because you became something as a man. Uh, and you could give them something when you pass on. But the murderous evil brother, Scar, comes up with a diabolical plan. What does he do? He murders his brother, Mufasa. I don't know how y'all sit there. See, I, I never ever watched a movie. My mom says my mind is different from a lot of people. I never watched a movie and didn't walk away with 25 messages. I was amazed as a child when I paralleled huh, Scar and Mufasa to Cain and Abel. I wish I had a church in here. I wish I had a church in here. Because what fathers have got to recognize that there's some stuff in your family that you're gonna have to fight to make sure it don't destroy your children. I'll just clap for myself. I know y'all got perfect families. I know, I know all y'all got perfect families, brothers. But some of you fathers got to recognize there's a spirit of alcoholism that roams through your family and you're gonna have to fight that thing to make sure it if some fathers in here have struggled with the spirit of pornography, you got to recognize that if you don't handle that thing, it'll mess around and get a hold of your children. It's what they call generational curses. Long story short, Scar kills Mufasa. And to make matters worse, he manipulates Simba into believing that it's his fault. Do I have anybody remember this? Fathers, watch out for family members that like to play mind tricks with your children. I, I ain't got time. I ain't got, I ain't got, I wish I had time to really walk this thing. Give me just a little bit more volume because my, my voice is fainting. Yeah, fathers, watch out for those family members that when you bring your kids around, they treat your kids funny because they think that you think that you better than them. Watch out for them. I, I don't care who you are, you're not going to mistreat my children. Mama, daddy, uncle, niece, you're not going to mistreat my children. Well, y'all just think y'all better. Well, we didn't say it, but we will agree with it. Amen. Uh, y'all pray for me. Pray for me, y'all. You think your kids bet my, I never said that, but if you, you know, uh, I will amen that thing. Amen, somebody. You got to watch out for sometimes family members and what, 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 what this evil uncle did. He manipulated little Simba and told him, you need to run. I wish I had a church in here today. Told him, run away from this place because you have caused your father's death. Run away from this place because there's nothing here for you. Run away from this place. And he has him running away in guilt and in shame. But he also has him running away from his father's throne. Preach, Pastor Troy. He has him running away from his rightful place. He has him running away from his inheritance. And Simba goes away from what belongs to him. And I'm so thankful that God will never leave us by ourselves. Even though his father had died, God saw fit to send him two friends. I wish I had a church. God saw fit to send him two friends. One was named Timon and the other was named Pumbaa. Do I have a church in here today? And these two friends, I love them because they, they ushered him through his grief. What I love about him, they ushered him through his grief, not with a PhD. They ushered him through his grief, not with medicinal or recreational marijuana. Puff, puff, pass. They ushered him through his grief, not with Hennessy. You sure got quiet then. But pastor, how did they usher him through his grief? I'm so glad you asked me. These two godly sick friends, Timon and Pumbaa ushered him through his grief with a song. I wish I had a church in here. Now this wasn't no Fetty Wap song. This, this wasn't no, nah, 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 nah. This wasn't no Cardi B. These two friends came up with a song to take his mind off of his, I wish I had a church in here. I don't know why y'all do me like this. Y'all know I'm preaching good. 
But Pastor, what was the song if it wouldn't Cardi B and it wouldn't Fanny Wap? Well, it's a little simple song that hit the top 40 charts and stayed there for a long time. Little song entitled Akun Namatad. I wish I had a church in here. Y'all working me too hard. Akun Namatad. What a wonderful phrase. I wish I had a church in here. Akun Namatad. All my passing days. Somebody say, what it mean, Pastor? It means don't worry. I wish I had a. What the hell, oh? This dude is going all the way back to 1994, amen. Song said it was a problem free philosophy, Akuna Matata. And I thank God that God knows how to send our children friends that will help them get through life. But I also love the fact that God knows that sometimes. You need one more. <laughs> See, these two friends, Timber and Pumba, got him to a certain level, but he still needed one more friend. I wish I had a church in here. One more friend that would help him get back on the right track. One more friend that would help him recognize his true identity. One more friend who could point him in the right direction. And only by the grace of God did God send him a third friend. Happened to be a monkey named Rafiki. I wish I had a church in here. Brother Rafiki shows up on the scene and hooks up with Simba. And what Simba doesn't remember, help me Holy Ghost. I wish y'all could get on my level, I really do. What Simba doesn't remember is that him and Rafiki have met before. I wish I had a church. What Simba doesn't remember is that Rafiki and Mufasa were friends in the beginning. Ah. What Simba doesn't remember is that at Simba's birth, it was Rafiki who was present, who lifted him up for all of the kingdom to see that this is the heir. So they meet and Simba starts to share with him that he misses his daddy. He starts to share with him that he is grieving because his father is dead. And I'll never forget these words from Rafiki. Rafiki says, your father, uh, your father is not dead. Wait a minute now, I, I was there, I, I saw him. I, I know that he is dead. Rafiki said, no, 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 your father is not dead, he is alive. Some say, where is he alive? I desire to see him again. I desire to converse with him. Where is he alive? And Rafiki says, come here. <laughs> I feel good, y'all. Come here and look into the water. I wish I had a church in here. I don't know how y'all sit there, boy. Some of y'all got to go watch the movie, I guess, because y'all ain't feeling me. Rafiki says, you want to see your dad? You want to see your father again? Look, oh God, into the water. Simba now, a older lion, not a baby anymore. A mature lion looks into the water and at first, I'm gonna tell you what he see, mama. At first he sees his own reflection. Help him, Holy Ghost. But not long after seeing his own reflection, something magical happens. And as he's looking at his own reflection in the water, his reflection transforms into the image of his father. Help me, God. I dare you to tell your neighbor, look into the water. See, everybody in this room needs a Rafiki in their life. Everybody needs somebody that'll point you in the right direction. Everybody needs somebody that knows who you are when you don't know who you are. And they can help you reconnect with your true identity. In the water, he sees his father and his father says to him, Simba, this is not who you are. Simba, 
what are you doing out here? Simba, you are my son. You are my heir. And if I was the Lion King, when I passed away, I passed to you everything that I was, everything that I had, everything that I could be, now it all belongs to It's in that moment that Simba realizes who he is and something happens in his mind and there's a transformation that takes place. And my favorite part of the movie is when they show Simba going back to reclaim that which belonged to him. Oh, I wish somebody could look at the screen for a minute. I wish somebody could look at the screen for a minute because fathers, your children ought to recognize that everywhere they go, you stand behind them. Everywhere they go, you are with them. No matter how high they go, you gonna be there. No matter how low they go, you gonna be there. Cause that's what fathers. His father reminded him of his destiny. His father gave him, don't miss this fathers, I'm closing. His father gave him what he needed while he was living. Yeah. I'm going to clap for myself, Dad. Is, I'll say it again because it's one of those important points of my message. His father, Mufasa, gave Simba what he needed while Mufasa was living. Fathers, you need to recognize that sometimes we work too much. Do you see the claps? Sometimes we're so busy trying to make a living that we fail to realize that you cannot put a price on your time and your attention. Take it from me, you can give your children everything they want materially and that does not guarantee they will be a success. Matter of fact, it seems to me that the more you give them, ah, Seems like the lazier they get or the more entitled they feel. But a real father recognizes the precious thing that I can give you is my time, my attention while I'm living. Watch this. So that after I'm dead and gone, you still remember what I taught you. You still remember what I told you. You still retain what I gave you. And he goes back to fight face and defeat brother Scar. what's the story Mufasa was the right tool for Simba can you imagine if Simba had a had some other daddy it's quiet in here now can you imagine if Simba did not have Mufasa in his life to teach him what he needed to teach him while he was living how this story might have turned out Fathers, I need you to recognize that it is no accident that you are the father of those children. I need you to recognize that it is no accident, no coincidence that you're the father of those children. I know you probably didn't intend on becoming their father, but God looked at you and said, you are the right tool. I wish I had a church in here. God looked at you and said, you are the one that can change their lives. Father, don't you give up on your children. Don't you quit on your children. I don't care how much they act like they don't. They need you. Good God Almighty. They need you. They need you. They may never say it, but but they need you. I'll do you one bad that. They long for you. I want to set the record straight today. Out of all of that, a mother cannot replace the impact or the importance, I don't care what you say, of a father. Somebody say fathers or the right tool. Give God praise if you got it, because I'm done. Come on, you can do better than that.